to the throne of grace and ask God to bless us on today. Hallelujah. Father, we truly thank you for blessing us to be here this morning. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you're doing and all that you're going to do according to your holy word. We thank you, O oh God, and we acknowledge you for all that is good and all that is good in us. We pray for all of those that have a desire to be here today, but they just couldn't be for some reason or another. But Lord, we know that you know. We ask that you would send out the spirit of encouragement and let it rest upon them even now. Oh, God bless you people everywhere. In the mighty name of Jesus, as we celebrate this Passover Sunday, bless, strengthen, and encourage every heart and every family that's represented here on today. We thank you, Father, for each and every person that have gathered here, for giving us the mind to be here. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we owe all to you, because without you, we could do nothing. We thank you for the cross, O oh God, that gives us hope that we don't have to be lost. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Now I ask that you would work my mouth. Give me what to say and how to say it in the spirit of love and meekness. Only that you be lifted up. You be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, touch somebody's heart today. They may not know you, Lord. They may be indecisive and and just in a weird place, Lord, we ask that you would move mightily according to your word. In Jesus' name, give us a made up mind, Lord. Oh, God, that we choose only you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, word my mouth. Give me clarity of speech and explanation on today. That you be lifted up and glorified. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together and let's give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You all may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. I have to say this. I'm so glad to see Elisa and Craig today. Thank God for them being with us. Amen. Thank God for all of you all. God is so good. Come on, somebody say that with me. God is so good. In the midst of it all, in spite of it all, God, he's a good God. He's a God that's worthy to be praised. You hear me say many times, if I had a thousand tongues, brother, let me. And if I praise him with every one of them, if I praise him in the morning, and praise him at noonday, and praise him at midnight, they woke up the next day and did it all over again, Brother Davis. I still wouldn't have praised him enough for how good he's been to me. He's been some hard times. He's been some mountains to climb. He's been some rough days. He's been some rainy days. But I thank God in spite of it all. Hallelujah. He's a loving God. He's a caring God. He's a God full of compassion, full of mercy that's new every morning. Don't y'all know we're blessed? Don't you know we are blessed? When you think about the people over there in the war torn, torn country, over in the Ukraine, those people, they are suffering. They're suffering mightily. And here we're free over here in this country. We're able to come together on a Sunday morning and worship our God. Give God the praise. Give God the glory. I still got your anchor up here, buddy. That's the anchor, the anchor of my soul. Hallelujah. God will keep us. He'll keep us where we need to be. If we have a mind, it's the first left to be a willing mind. A mind not to drift to the left or to the right, but a mind to focus on Jesus. And that's what it's all about. Amen. I like to use some charm. I'm not going to leave very long before you. How many have heard the story, the Easter story of the Passover? How many have heard that? How many have heard this story? Put your hands up. Let me see your hands. 
Well, that's wonderful. I'm so glad that we've heard of the resurrection. We've heard about what Jesus did. We've heard about how Jesus suffered for you and he suffered for me. And he hadn't done nothing to deserve what he went through. But God thought, amen, that we were worthy to send his only begotten son. He said, not a son to the world, condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Come on, somebody. Might be saved. God loved us that much that he allowed his son to suffer for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. He paid the price, y'all. Now, we, there's a price that we have to pay. And that price is claiming Jesus as our Lord and Savior. As the one that makes all things possible. I preached last week. Jesus, come on, changes everything. He changes everything. Well, one that might look one way that never try to make it look a certain kind of way, but Jesus changes everything. Hallelujah. We're going to use for a subject this morning. Living proof. Don't y'all know we are living proof? Living proof. What is that? What is living proof? Even in a natural uh, court of law, they look for the truth, supposedly. Look for the truth. And with the truth, there must be some evidence. Evidence of the truth. Hallelujah. How many have Jesus, have God done something for you lately? <laughs> Come on, this one. Come on, somebody. I said, every hand has place on the Lord. How many of us have been blessed by the Lord? Hallelujah. Every hand on the Lord. Why? Because He woke you up this morning. And the living proof is that I'm looking at you. And you looking at me. Is living proof that God touched you this morning and blessed you this morning. And not only did he do that, he gave you a mind to be in the house of God. You see, we as a saint of God, as a child of God, we must show the world that there is a reality in serving a true and living God. He's not a dead God that can't do nothing about your situation, but all things are possible to him that believes. If we just believe God and step out on his word and know that it's true and don't doubt. There was a man in the Bible after Jesus had came back, the disciples met in a place and they were all there, but Thomas was not there. He was one of the disciples that had seen everything that Jesus did. But come on now, he had to have some evidence. He had to have some proof. He said, I ain't going to believe it until I come on now. Until I be able to stick my hand through the, through the holes and stick my hand through the, 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 the hole in his chest where they stuck with the spear. He said, but come on now. Come on, come on. If we don't believe God for what he's done for you. And if you, if you tell the truth about it, your heart of hearts will let you know that God has done something for you, Daniel. God has brought you this far by faith. It hasn't been easy all the time. There have been some things that have gone on in our life we haven't understood. There's some things that have shaken us, Reverend Linda. Some things that brought us to our knees. But yet God, He was there. He was there all the time. And the scripture says, I look to the hills for with coming my help. Some of us ought to stop looking down and learn how to look up. Look up where God, my help coming from the Lord. Come on here. Hallelujah. Proof living proof. Listen, if you would know me before the Lord came into my heart, came into my mind, came into my spirit, and changed me all around. If you knew me then, you know that I'm living proof that the Lord will make a difference. That I'm a new creature. Old things are passed away. Come on, y'all. I say, old things are them old things, them old habits, them old disappointments, them old Jesus. Go to the book of Acts, the first chapter. The book of Acts, the first chapter, and the first verse, and the Bible reads like this. It says, 
the former uh, uh, testes have I made oh Theopolis of all that Jesus began both to do and teach and what this is until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen that's come on out it's the first and second verse of Acts the first chapter and what it means is that former testings was when Luke was talking about Luke's gospel how he was directed he was, he was directed in the story of Theopolis whose name means lover of God and told him come on now and said obviously Luke a new a man by the name of Theopolis and undoubtedly the name was appropriate for him a lover of God Luke's gospel for all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Come on, Jesus just didn't say things, he did things. Come on now, wherever he ended up, something was going to happen. Something, uh, the gospel is, is the power of God unto salvation. I say it's the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is the good news. It ain't no bad news. If you want some bad news, just turn on your TV. Turn on your radio and you'll hear good news. But if you want to hear some, some bad news, but if you want to hear some good news, open up your Bible. Go to somebody's church and hear the word of God. Hear the word of hope. Hear the word of, of faith. And the Bible says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You've got to have faith. And it says that without faith it's impossible to please him. You can't come on now. You cannot have faith and please God. And our only objective ought to be to please God. That's what we need to be doing. And all the people that are gathering on this special day, amen, God bless each and every person. But listen, it goes beyond today. Because we, if God blesses us to see another day, he expects us to have the same mind, the same uh, 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 mindset that we have. We, you know what I heard people say on many occasions? I don't have nothing to prove. Well, that's not correct. Because you do have something to prove. You do have something to prove. Got to, you need to prove that God is a holy God, that God is a loving God, that God is somebody that can do something about your situation, and that there is a reality in serving a true and living God who He is. He's not a dead God, but He's a living God. Why and why do I know that? Because He's living in me. I'm not the same person that I used to be. I'm not that same way that was going through life in a not knowing what I was doing, just thinking about myself, just trying to so-called be successful. You're not a success until you turn to God, until you let God have it. And we call him Lord, but do you know what Lord means? Lord means relinquishing our control. Some of us still want to be in control, but we got to let go and let God. And many times we're struggling, we're frowning like a fish out of water, but if we just let God have it, Sister Kathy, you know what I'm talking about. You got to just let God have it. We're struggling, we're, we're striving against God and all those things. I ain't trying to make nobody mad. I ain't trying to upset nobody, but I'm just telling the truth. And the Bible says that he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It didn't say set you free, it said make you free, and when you've been made free, that's what you are. Hallelujah, you might stumble sometime, you might make a mistake sometime, but the thing you need to remember is that when Jesus went to the cross, he said something at the end, he said it's finished, and he said it's finished, and when something is finished, that means it's done with, there's nothing left to do, because it's already done. Come on now. Now we as a child of God, as a Christian, as a saint of God, we got to do our part. Jesus already did what he's going to do. Come on, I said he already did what he's going to do. We call on God to do, do this and to do that, and God has already empowered us to be able to do it. If you go to fourth, the fourth chapter of Philippians and the 13th verse, and he says this, I and I, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. What the problem is in today's society is too many people trying to do this thing on their own. You're trying to do this complicated thing that's called life on your own. We complicate it because sometimes we get in the way of God. We get crossed up in the will of God. Sometimes God's will comes against our will. It's the opposite of what we want to do. Come on somebody. But if you really want life, the Bible says that Jesus came that 
that you might have life and that more abundantly. How many more abundant life? Come on now. And that's why Jesus came. He came to give it to you. But when he tried to give it to you, you got to receive it. I can, I can offer this man something. I can say to him, he can, he can put his fist up or he can open his hand so he might receive what I'm trying to give him. God wants to give somebody his salvation on today. But you've been closing your fist. You've been turning away from God. Oh, I'm not talking about you, and I'm not complaining. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just explaining. I know for myself that I did it a long time. I rejected God a long time, but as I get older and older, I remember when I was in my 40s, and then I was in my 50s, and then I was in my 60s, but now I have turned 70. Come on, somebody, and that's what was promised to me. And all that's after that, come on, it's bonus points. And so I really don't know I got to take advantage of the time, the extra time that God gave me. I got to take advantage of the opportunity that God had presented to me. Presented to me. I made a lot of mistakes along the way, and I might still make some mistakes, Brother Davis, but I know one thing about it, that if I have a mind, if I have a mind to serve God, God will help me, and he's no respect of persons. It don't make no difference about what your title is, what people say about you, how people want to lift you up and all these things, we still, all of us, they don't make no difference because I'm standing up here in a high place and you're sitting down there in a so-called lower place that I am, but I don't mind coming down where you are because I know we all the same. If you cut me, I'll bleed. If I cut you, you will bleed. But God loves us all. But there's one thing about it, we got to learn how to Believe and trust in God. We go to the doctor, and the doctor said, Where well, else come on somebody? And then we we'll go to the lawyer, and the lawyer said, But what about Jesus? What about Jesus? What did Jesus, what did Jesus say? What did he say? He said, If you love me, keep my commandments. He said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And when we keep his commandments, we will be blessed. I didn't say we would mess up from time to time. Uh, come on now, but he said in his word, uh, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So therefore, that takes away all excuses that we might have. Somebody said, well, I would have if I could have. Well, I want to let you know you can if you want to. You can if you will, but you got to supply the line. God wants you to make it. I don't care what the enemy has said. I don't care what your neighbor said. I don't care what your so-called friend said. You can make it if you want to. Because God created each and every one of us just for that purpose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now the scripture says in the third verse, after Jesus, come on now, this is post-resurrection. After the resurrection, it says, it says, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Come on now, infallible proofs. Come on, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Come on now, and why did Jesus feel like he had to show himself because he showed himself to prove that everything that he had said previously before was true, that it came about. Come on now, somebody. Now, the, the, now the folks, the, the religious leaders of that time and the folks that wanted to disprove him, they even put a stone before the grave and all of that to try to say that it wasn't true. Come on now, but Jesus, when he showed up on the scene, come on now, he was a little proof. He was a little proof. He was a little proof today because he's still blessing folks. He's still pulling folks out of the blessing of the devil. He's still lifting up people's hearts and lifting up people's spirits. Come on now, he's still putting the devil to shame. He's still putting the devil on his feet. He's a little proof. And he's living in each and every one of us. But what about this thing? What about this thing? Now we, as a child of God, we that call ourselves Christian, there's something we must do. We must prove that Jesus is alive and well. Because he's alive. Some of us say he's alive and well. in we sisters, he's alive and me. Because the things that I used to love, I now hate. And the things that I used to hate, I now love. I love the Lord because he's so good to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Now go to Romans, the 
the 12th chapter. Come on, I asked that question last week. I asked, I said, well, well what does the Romans the 12th chapter, the first verse says? Come on now. It said, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, your reasonable duty. Come on, I know words, therefore, I beg you, he was saying here, brother, by the mercies of God, that you yield or present your bodies, your total personality, that you would live your living, let that be your living sacrifice, set apart for God. But we're caught up in so much stuff, so much distraction, and what we're caught up in so many uh, things that cause us to not to focus. But we got to focus our attention on the things of God. What do you want me to do, Lord? What would you have me to say, Lord? Where would you have me to go, Lord? Well, come on, somebody. What would you have me to do? The Bible said that Jesus went about just doing good. He had three years of ministry. Come on now. Those three years of ministry. Come on now. He took full advantage of that. Come on, somebody. Amen. Ah, uh, mercies of God that you may present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Come on now. And then what did he say? What did he say? Uh-huh. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that you may what? That you may what? That you may what? That you may prove. Come on now. Oh, it's not enough just to show up on a Sunday morning and then we got shiny shoes up. Yeah, I shined my shoes last night. I like to look presentable. I had an old man tell me one time, you ain't dressed on until you shine your shoes. I don't care what you got on. I've seen an old man with a pair of overalls on. But you look down at the feet and they say, come on, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And the shoes are shine. Come on now. They just change the whole appearance of everything. Come on now. Now that's the hour of appearance. And that's all good. And we can work on that and do this. The women, you can comb your hair in a certain style. And, and this men, we can put on our suits and, and all the things that we normally would do to make ourselves presentable on the outside. But there's a, another type of presenting. There's a presenting of our hearts to God. Come on now. And when our heart is right, what's on the inside, watch this, will show up on the outside. Come on, I said, what's on the inside? Will show up on the outside. You ever know, met somebody and it was just something about them? There was something about their demeanor. There was something about their spirit that was just a pleasantry to be around that person. Why? Right? Because there was something right on the inside, and that's what made them inviting on the outside. Uh, I got to get through. I got to get through. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. And be not conformed to this world. And that's the struggle that we have as people. This world is always pulling at us. It's always putting something in our face. And, 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 and something that the flesh, come on now, is drawn to. But I'm going to tell you this today, that your flesh are in you up in a mess. Come on here. I said your flesh, and that's why the Bible says, uh, uh, walk in the spirit that you should not uh, 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 do what now? Fulfill. Fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh always wants something, and what it wants is what it's not supposed to have. Come on now. I said and what, what it wants is usually what it ain't supposed to have. I'm supposed to have my wife and leave me alone. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on here. I'm supposed to be doing the thing that God wants me to do and leave all that other stuff alone. Come on here. Hallelujah. Come on here. Yes, yes. And it said that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect and complete will of God. And that's where we get tricked up sometimes. Come on here. Now here's Judas, real quick. Walk with the disciples. Right there with the law. But Judas had a problem that a whole lot of folks had. Come on, he had a money problem. He was a 
treasure. And he had a thing about having the money. Come on now. I want you to know that he sold him. He sold himself for 30 pieces of silver. He didn't think no more of Jesus than 30 pieces of silver. And I, in, in some of my studies, I found out that if a man's ox uh, uh, gored a slave, that that's what he had to pay. Only if I said a slave. A slave was a person that's so called wasn't worth much in those days. But if, you, if I had an ox and he'd go it, your slave, that was what, what, what I had to pay to get that right. Come on now. He didn't think no more. After being with Jesus, after seeing Jesus ready to dead, after seeing an unstoppable uh, uh, death he is, after seeing him open up blinded eyes, he turned around and, and saw Jesus, turned Jesus in for 30 pieces of silver. Don't you shout. Don't you. Come on, somebody. Don't you give up Jesus. Over no money or nothing else. You can always tell what somebody's at to just ask them for some money. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But the Bible says this. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. It didn't say money was the root of all evil. It said, for the love of money. Well, come on now. Don't let money take you any place else other than where God wants you to go. I heard him preaching the other day on the, on the TV. He said this, he said, uh, uh, he said, uh, God and Hollywood don't. <laughs> you know why? Because Hollywood is a bunch of actors. Hollywood is a bunch of people pretending to be somebody that they're not. Y'all don't hear me. They're, they're pretending to be somebody that they're not. Now watch this, we're going to go deep on you. Is it, don't, don't, you don't want to be a hypocrite. Then come on now. And that's why I wouldn't want to. Uh, being knowing what I know now and being in the Lord, I wouldn't want to let my career be acting. That's what come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. You, uh, 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 you spend your time being somebody that you're not. There's a whole lot of people today that's trying to be something that you're not. Come on here. All I want you to be is what He created you to be, and that's a child of God. Don't worry about no position. Don't worry about this or that. Don't worry about no title. Don't worry about this or that. I want you to know that you all that you need to be when you what God created you to be and who God created you to be. We sang a song in the choir. God made me. Come on out. So the problem is some, some people are not satisfied with God what God made you to be. Well, if you just stop for a minute and think, maybe if you quit getting in God's way, you'll end up being chapter John. He said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. And we try to be it all with our God. A living, living proof. Be who you are. Remind yourself, I belong to God. God made me. And he made me for a purpose. He didn't make me because he just didn't have nothing else to do. He made Sister Marie Watch it, just for me. <laughs> Come on now. I'm going to get to the end of this evening. I know I got to come to the wall. I got to get to the end of coming this evening. Oh, come on now. I've learned a few things in 47 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Living proof. Amen. We really, truly, truly. Realize who we are and whose we are. And buy into the fact, come on, what it means to be a child of God and the duty that is set before us. The responsibility, watch this, and the honor that God would choose us. All the heavenly hosts, all the angels, 
God chose us. He chose you. 